Welcome back to New Rockstars. What if episode seven had four bringing the party to Earth as an only child just looking for a good time? I mean, makes sense, aren't we all? And he still found Jane and Darcy, but didn't find any of the other Avengers. And everyone in the universe seemed to show up on Earth. Like even the Sovereign. I, I cannot get over the fact that those gold people showed up for this party. Good God, those snobby golds. Anyway, <laughs> like literally, what is this? A Rick Sanchez party? And in the end, Earth was saved when Thor's mama showed up. Or was it? This is Rogue Theory, the show where we pitch the wildest theories for the nerdy titles that we love. My name is MT and going rogue with me today, we have our own party goddess herself, Jessica Clemens. What's going on, Jess? Hey, ready to talk about the snobby golds and the frosty <laughs> blues. Ooh, nice. <laughs> snobby golds and frosty big Frosty Blues. That's mm -hmm. nice. yeah. Don't get me started. Oh, don't get me started, baby. Don't get me started. This ain't big question, but I got something bigger. Nope, just keep oh. going. Skip. Edit that out. No. Edit that keep out. It keep, it going. keep it in. Okay. Keep it in. Okay. Yeah, keep it in. Okay. And we, of course, we got good friend of the show and intergalactic DJ Supreme, Marina Mastros. What's going on? Sup? Yeah, I'm a DJ for sure. I was in the episode in the back <laughs> DJing. Like you're the you're the alternate in case uh you know Grandmaster gets his, yeah, his, his wrist gets yeah. like hurt. She, she like, was actually in the background it. doing yeah, the DJing and he was doing. The oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. okay. He, she was the arms. She was actually the arms. <laughs> <up again. laughs> yeah. And of course, host of the Films Lost First podcast and the guy at the party who will definitely get a tattoo with you. <laughs> It's Eddie Villanueva. What's going on, Eddie? What is up, guys? I'm excited to be here. And this last episode probably has been one of the more funner ones, but I can't wait to talk about it with you guys. And of course, this episode of What If was one big party until some gnarly looking party crashers showed up at the very end, giving us our strongest to be continued moment in the series yet. So this mm -hmm. moment at the end brings us to our first topic of today, why was the Watcher surprised? Because if he was supposed to be a step ahead of knowing the consequences of a character's actions, why did Ultravision catch him off guard? And like, what will be his response to Ultravision? Are you raising your hand? Teacher, Jessica? teacher, yeah. teacher, teacher, okay. teacher, teacher. Okay, all right. Sorry, I think, teacher, I think we got Daddy, uh, sorry, Jess's teacher, hands sorry, up in Daddy. the back. What's going on, Jess? Um, I think I think it's pretty clear that the Watcher oh. was surprised. Oh, sorry, not, not in an offensive way, but I think that <laughs> <laughs> not in an offensive way. I think it's clear that the Watcher was surprised because this Ultra Vision wasn't from this universe, wasn't oh, from Party oh, Thor's universe. Okay. So I think because he okay. is always a step ahead, and so he was like, they're gonna live happily ever after. Who the hell is this? And I think this is leading up to even if it's a gang of big bads for the um for the um for the series of What If, um, that the Watcher will eventually have to step in oh. because these people are now just jumping timelines. And mm -hmm. he's like, I watch everything, but I am not gonna allow you guys to just jump right. and rule over other people's timelines. That's not what we're doing right. here. Yeah. So I think not he was that. surprised not ultimately. Today. <laughs> not today. He said, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, not today, bitch. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, I'm here for it. Go off, Jeffrey Wright, go off. <laughs> yeah. But I think ultimately they're not, it's from a different mm. universe and they weren't supposed to be showing up in this one. That's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Jess is onto something as well because one of the biggest things that you look at with when it comes to Marvel history uh, when we introduce because I'm, I'm pretty sure we all assume this is Ultra Vision I'm going to go back to the comics and even during that time you know Ultra Vision was becoming a threat to the MCU as a whole the MCU comic universe and so they had to bring in Korvac because of the fact that they were worried about what I think why he was a surprise is that uh, this Ultra Vision was a Nexus being and mm. out operating outside of that timeline, it's difficult ah. to kind of pinpoint what is going on. And seeing as we're incorporating a ton of Nexus beings, that's the reason why it was such a surprise. Ah. Um, hopefully, mm. kind of along the same lines as Jess was saying, they move into the arena of him being the ultimate baddie at the end of this season. And we get all the Avengers from the previous What If episodes to combat against this. Maybe even getting a glimpse of uh, uh, Korvac, Michael Korvac from the comics, who yes. is the timekeepers have to actually pluck him out of the timeline and place him where Ultra Vision is so that they can combat against each other and Michael Korvac defeats Ultra Vision. Um, that would be a fun little twist, but I think that's kind of maybe the direction they were thinking. That'd be really cool. I mean, now we're having not only the Sorcerer Supreme in some sense of a way a Nexus being with the What If series, but now we have Ultra Vision who may, this may confirm he is a Nexus being. Ooh, I really like, I like that it. because the, I think there are rumors that Michael Korvac will be appearing in the Marvels as the main antagonist slash villain. And it would make sense mm. um, given that, you know, Michael Korvac is this being all about cosmic energy and, yep. you know, 
Car- Carol and Spectrum, that's their whole deal. Cosmic energy. Floating so really computer like combating in space. There you go. Seriously, this floating <laughs> computer that loves cosmic energy. It's the weirdest thing in the comics. Go go look it up. Um, but no, I really like that. What what you got, Marina? All right. Mine's the dumbest. Um... <laughs> no, don't say that, Marina. Oh, I literally... You're a genius. And, and why'd she be this. the most badass one out of all of them? She's like, well, Kevin Feige told me yesterday. It's the strongest thing you can do and most confident thing you can do coming in and being like, mine's the dumbest. <laughs> 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 Topic sentence. Mine's dumb. Uh, yeah, kidding, no. that's, <laughs> that's what I say every time. Though this watcher is Oatu, right? And um, right, he's yes. he's Earth's uh, watcher in particular. And by the way, I can't. I realize the watchers. That's always how they've looked, but I cannot separate it in my brain. If you guys have seen on Instagram, the filter where it makes your head big and the body mm. is little and then people pretend they're little kids. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there now every time I watch the show, I cannot take Jeffrey Wright seriously so <laughs> because he looks like a bobblehead. And he looks like he has that filter on, and I can't deal with it. It's so funny. He's actually at home, like, all right, and we're filming yeah. for Marvel. What if? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, you might as well. That's the proportions are identical. I can't. Okay, so in the comics, Oatu eventually is punished for uh, interfering with Earth's uh, like events, mm. right? For interfering mm. and actually right. taking action. We don't know in this series if this is before or after the, that he's already been punished. So the rest of the Watchers in Watcher World have now punished him and he's been kicked out of Watcher World, right? And so part of being a Watcher is that you have access to the Encyclopedia Universum, right? And so my theory is that one of the consequences for him getting booted for interfering is that he doesn't have access to that anymore. In other words, he was plugged into the brain. Mm. His big old bobblehead was plugged in. Oh, that's a good theory. And they punished yeah. him and he's now disconnected. So he still knows everything that he sees currently but he can still get like surprised because he doesn't have access to all the knowledge in all of the other watchers' heads. He's kind mm-hmm. of working on his own. So it came in as a surprise. And because this is the first time he's been like, wait, what? So maybe they punished him yeah. in between, or maybe mm-hmm. he's working on his own this whole time. He now can get blindsided, right? Because he was straight mm-hmm. up like, wait, what? Which was very I funny. Love that. Okay. I do love that. I love that a lot because like we I feel like we're starting to really go into the concept of like, you know, like a world mind. Because like the the Nova mm-hmm. Corps in the comics, there is a world mind, the Kree super intelligence, mm-hmm. I mean supreme intelligence, sorry. Um, that's a world mind type, like, you know, uh, an amalgamation of like all the Kree minds put together. Mm-hmm. So like I think it'd be really interesting to see like a watcher world mind in the watcher world mm-hmm. where like they were all connected. It's like I we're all omniscient. We're sharing all the stuff that we learned. And then like, you know, being like, oh watcher, Uatu, he f- up he's out of here you don't get the the sweet info you get your own shit right now he's like whatever i'm on a tv show now i don't need your guys stupid thing i have an agent i gotta deal with kevin feige so whatever yeah yeah i don't need you daddy (laughs) yeah i don't need you daddy (laughs) but now that he's kicked out he has more motivation to intervene right Mm, so in the future of the series he might be way more likely like jessica was saying i think like now he's going to start getting involved because he, I mean, mm-hmm. by right now he's like, well, if I'm kicked out, I'm kicked out. I might as well do whatever the f- I want. I also like the idea of Doctor Strange, since he's able to see him mm-hmm. being like, what happens next? And right. like, I don't know. I was disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> like, useless. I don't know. It's like that. It's like uh, unveiling the Wizard of Oz yeah. to just be a man behind the yeah. curtain. And it's like, why can't you do half the shit you think you can do? And it's like, oh no, they kicked me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The watch was like, uh, sorry, wrong number. <laughs> These are all really great theories. I love them all. Um, I'm going to give the ladies 2,000 points each for their amazing theories, but I've got to give it to Eddie V for 3,000 points. With 3,000 points for Eddie V because my man brought up Michael Corbett. Oh, you love him 3,000. I love him 3,000. I should have announced that up top. No, no, Um, it's great. It's going to be a very biased episode because I love Eddie 3,000. It's true. We have a Twitter but, relationship. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> we do. So what are you guys' thoughts then on the on the idea that maybe at that point when Awatu actually was surprised, we learned from the Loki TV show that at that point in time, at the end of the series or at the end of the season, that once they crossed that threshold, as uh, as they uh, they mentioned, that anything was possible. What if at that point in the series, because time is relative, that at that point in the series, it kind of runs parallel with what was going on in the Loki series. And at that moment, that the moment that uh, mm. he died, 
that's the point at to where oh. I watch it was like, oh wait, what's going on now? Oh wow! It could have. I think it could line up for yeah. every universe that way because mm -hmm. it's like that's how I'm thinking. Or I don't. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I assume that's what's happening with like all the other series that's currently hap going on. Mm -hmm. Like that uh, yeah. boom mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. across the globe happening at yeah. the same time. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me if the watchers just like. Oh, everything's happening at once. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Everything's going on. <laughs> also, it would be gr it, for just like tangential like connection. It would be a good mm -hmm. idea to do that. Yeah. So if the writers are listening to this episode of Rogue <laughs> Theory, no. what do you mean if steal Eddie's idea? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean if? Yeah. What, I'm All sorry, four I'm sorry. of us are for hire. Michael Waldron. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Michael Waldron. Do you have any kind of say? MT, you're friends with him. Tell him. <laughs> there you go. But no, I really like that Eddie because like in as established in Loki, there is the possibility of timelines crossing mm -hmm. and you know, universes intersecting. So like there could be a chance that we're seeing that here with, you know, Ultron Vision crossing over with into this new reality. But chances are he's probably doing that as an extension of the Space Stone's powers that we see at the beginning of the season because we mm -hmm. learned that the Red Skull can open up a portal to different dimensions with the Space Stone. Like well, that's just so power that we just didn't know that until mm -hmm. now. Yeah. But I do like the idea of, you know, the incursions, which is yeah, a, a really Marvel cool. term happening um, in that moment. But anyway, good Eddie, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, that's nice. Good stuff. And that's why I love you 3000. Oh, uh, we all do. But we've got some theories about why Loki was big and blue this episode. But before we do, head on over to newrockstarsmerch.com because they have not one, but two Shang-Chi inspired shirt design. There's the latest Obsession shirt, the Great Protector, and a shirt with the lovable furball Morris on it. And you can get a great discount when you buy both at the same time because we have the technology to do so. And you'll be getting yourself two cool shirts and helping support new rock stars and all the content that we make. But we also want to thank Simply Safe. Simply Safe just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera, the system that the US News and World Report names the best home security system of 2021 just got even better. This brand new outdoor security camera is engineered with all the advanced tech and security features you want and need to keep you and your family safe. It has an ultra wide 140 degree field of view, 1080p HD resolution and an eight times zoom. Not seven. Seven is in the past. We are in the eight times zoom territory. That means you can zoom in and clearly see images. You can clearly see things like faces and license plates. And it has a built in spotlight with color night vision. It is super simple to set up and usually just takes minutes for all that minutes crazy. And it has an easy to remove rechargeable battery and can go anywhere on your property. If you got a big property, don't even worry about it. And the camera integrates with your Simply Safe home security system so that every door, window, room, and outdoor space protected all of it. And we actually have a Simply Safe system in the office in a few New Rockstar staffers have systems in their homes, and we love how easy that they are to install and to use. So if you try to show up, we'll know that you're coming. We'll beat you with the baseball bat. Just kidding, don't do that. We won't do that. We're not violent people. So to learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash rogue. And what's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and the first month of monitoring service for free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that is simplysafe.com slash rogue. And also we want to thank Bespoke Post because this fall Bespoke Post is here with a new seasonal lineup of Box of Awesome collections. And Bespoke Post partners with small businesses to bring you the most unique goods every month. Some cool boxes we've enjoyed in the past had the supplies to barrel age whiskey or to have an awesome picnic. So no matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From autumn craft beers to camping gear essentials, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. And they even have a box with everything you need to make an awesome jack-o'-lantern and impress the neighbors or scare the children, hopefully the second part. And to get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com and your answers help them pick the right box of awesome for you. And they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories and it's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. That's the versatility that Box of Awesome does. And each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Plus with each box of awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up and coming brand. So please, Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code ROGUE at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com, code ROGUE for 20% off your first box. 
And we also want to thank Hawthorne. Upgrade your grooming routine with Hawthorne. Hawthorne is a premium men's grooming brand that makes it easy to be your best with skincare and hair care essentials that work for you as an individual. To make things simple, they built a quiz based on data from thousands of customers to recommend products for your body chemistry, skin type, hair type, and lifestyle. And it will recommend face cleansers, moisturizers, cologne, and all the other ingredients for a great routine. So to get started, build your personal profile by taking Hawthorne's quiz. They ask things like how often you shave or if you prefer bar soap or body wash. And it's really quick and easy. And at the end of the quiz, you'll view customized products tailored to your body, hair, skin, and lifestyle. And folks at New Rockstars use their products with off-screen producer Zach swearing by Hawthorne deodorant and cologne. And Hawthorne stands by their customers. So if you're not completely satisfied, they'll retail your products for free based on your feedback and pay for the shipping. So there's truly no risk. So elevate your personal care today by taking Hawthorne's quiz. Go to hawthorne.co and use promo code ROGUE to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O, co, promo code ROGUE, hawthorne.co, not C-O-M, promo code ROGUE. So moving on to our second topic of the show, how the hell did Loki become a fully fledged frost giant? Because we've always been under the assumption that Loki was a frost giant runt. But this Loki was definitely no runt. Was, like, was this like just a quirk of this timeline? Or would this have always happened if he was left with his people? Also, uh, does Loki, does Loki, does Loki f I think Loki, <laughs> oh, I, mean, I think Loki. the implication here <laughs> is that Loki would be, would be at these parties. He'd be Actually, picking up these women and they'd be f so, so Loki is a runt, right? And and so my theory is yes. in this timeline, he is a runt, but in this universe, he, you know, um, you know, in real life, when you get bullied when you're a kid, sometimes oh, yes. it's mm. what makes you funny. Mm. Oh yeah, that's why this explains my entire this life. This explains okay. my entire life. Too deep, Marina. That, Too deep. Honestly, I feel like everybody here probably. <laughs> that's feel why attacked, we're. <laughs> so just no, no, it's like, it's like a. It's kind of a superpower. I told power. you not to read my diary, Marie. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Page 30 mine, 39 of mine, too. But, like, this is what happened. It's kind of a superpower that emerges when you get bullied as a kid. Is you're like, oh, I'll use humor to deflect it, which is, you know, mm -hmm. welcome to my life. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you're among friends. Uh, and this is kind of the same thing. So, like, he was a runt. He got bullied. Like, all the other Frost Giants just, like, massively, mercilessly bullied him from mm. when, like prepubescence, but then when he like got, when he, what is it called? Like got testosterone, right? Puberty. Yeah, puberty. Uh, <laughs> and he turned into a 40 foot tall uh, giant. He was, it was, he mm. was fueled by the energy that comes from uh, like having to deal with kids bullying you. And that's why he's so clever and it's funny. And that's why he's the leader now at the front of the pack mm. because he had to deal with all that growing up. And so he's funny, good looking, uh, 40 foot <laughs> feet tall. And that, so he mm. definitely f like for Absolutely. sure. Oh, yes. Cause he's built all that character as a kid. I, but I do, I slightly do agree with Marina in that take. I think, so if we go back to the first Thor movie and we see Odin turning Loki into what looks like just an Asgardian from what he normally mm -hmm. was, I think right. he's been living his entire life. This is rogue theory, you guys, so keep that in yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. He's been living his life to uh, for the just the love and acceptance from Odin. Mm -hmm. He wants right. nothing more than to be just as good in Odin's eye as Thor is. Right. So I think mm -hmm. not only like the magic that Odin and did use on Loki to turn him into an Asgardian, stunted him from turning into what a full-fledged frost giant ah, would be. Yeah. I think he just like was so preoccupied with being the chosen one, kind of like how like bullying makes you mm -hmm. this. It's like mm -hmm. he's been stunted like emotionally and physically oh. because he's been trying so hard to get Odin's uh, just acceptance. And so now that he doesn't have to get Odin's acceptance in this universe, oh. I think he's just a full-fledged frost giant and he's never had to be second best for anything. He's always oh. been welcomed amongst his people. So he has not, he doesn't, he didn't have that magic and he didn't have to have to get that acceptance from his father because he had all these frost giants that were all equally just like 
hey, we love you just the way you are. You don't have to match wits with Thor, the god of thunder here. Mm. We're all just frost giants, my dude. So I think he's just incredibly like lucky in this universe and just amongst people of his kind. That's such a we need, like We need like soft, that was soft strings underneath that with Jess just said so that way we can, you know. Wow, the power of love. I, I feel oh. like I feel like kind of going in, in slightly the opposite direction of Jess. I think in in the terms of him being on with the frost giants, him being a small runt as a baby, I feel like because we don't know a lot about how they raise their kids mm. over there, I mm. kind of get this like kind of idea, this this vibe that they're kind of like the Spartans, like from Three Hundred, where they train their kids up to be like oh. vicious and and battlesome and warriors. Yeah, and I yeah. feel like ha him having gone through all that helped him to become much bigger than what we see him in on our in the normal universe. Yeah. But also at the same time, uh, we are also still under the idea that there is a you know Norse mythology that is truth there and if mm. there is a Thor and a Frigga and if there's an Odin then there has to be a Loki and I feel like mm. there has to be some sense of maybe part of that magic that makes him the trickster god or mm. makes him that infamous god of mischief mm, there yeah. had to have been something that maybe kind of imparts in him that where he doesn't have to fully focus his energy on magic but maybe it's the energy in his strength or something like that. Maybe that's kind of the, yeah. the making up for on that side. Um, because you, there has to still be something according to like the whole mythos of Loki in Midgard's you know, theology or ideology or whatever. And, and making him being that cosmic incredible being. So no matter what universe he's in, he's always special. Do we know if the frost giants, cause the dad, Odin wanted peace amongst the kingdoms, or at least he said that's why he took Loki was to get peace from, to make everybody wholesome. But I'm like, you don't steal a child to yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, you don't steal a child, even though the child was abandoned. Most Just, of the time you don't yeah, steal Yeah, most of the time, it didn't work, it didn't work for Gamora. Yeah. It doesn't work mm, here. Yeah. Like yeah. stop trying yeah. to steal, what's with MCU stealing? <laughs> alien children. <laughs> but, not so um, great. Yeah, the adoption so, process is just too annoying. It's too, too much. Annoying. Too much, much paperwork. Steal the child. Yeah, Might yeah. as well just uh, destroy the people and take their <laughs> children. That one's nice. Should we take that one? Let's just take that one. No one's around. Yeah. yeah. Look, mm -hmm. that smooth things over. <laughs> like picking the right watermelon. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this one's firm. Yeah, yeah, this one's nice and firm. Well, every child will be oh, a there killer. You go. I think his mischievous would help him still with the people with the frost giants mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and just in like war and anything like yeah. that. But also I think his mischievous would still be there. And that's why he is the leader of the pack of frost giants when he mm -hmm. shows up to the party. Mm -hmm. right. Like it's like the other frost giants are like, damn, we ain't as sneaky as you. Like, we don't, we don't need to be that sneaky anymore, my dude. They didn't yeah. take you. They brought you back. And he's just like, nah, I'm still, yeah. I'm still Loki. <laughs> um, so I guess it's not really a question. I think it's more of like, and, and I'm <laughs> and I think you're, you could that that is very a right theory. Mm. Yeah, and that would make sense why we still have Loki. I can't wait till we go back into the Loki series and see Frost Giant Loki. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my god, yeah. he has to make a cameo. He now. has to make yeah. a cameo now. He now he's canon. And I'm gonna. Uh, when, but I do have a I do have an interesting question here. So because mm -hmm. we know that you know this Loki has some type of relationship with Thor, uh, we could also assume that he probably had a relationship with Frigga, even though that wasn't exactly mm -hmm. his mom. So do you think that this Loki has some type of knowledge of magic? Because he technically mm -hmm. has like two, mo well, I don't know if he has his frost giant moms, but he has two sets of parents. So like maybe Frigga ca taught him magic and taught him the magic that he needed to grow himself big, but he's not right. actually big. So do you think that Loki's tricking all of his friends? He could easily learn magic because think about it. Like every time your friend came over after school to like eat pizza or do homework or whatever, you're just like hanging out and the mom's like knocks on the door and is like, do you guys want hot cocoa or whatever? Mm. And she could yeah. just like knock on the door and be like, you guys want to learn magic? And then he just, <laughs> you know? You guys want to learn a spell? You guys want to learn I a think spell? This Loki could learn magic, but it show it would choose not to. Mm. Um, just as we have Party Thor, where it's like oh, this yeah. is a Thor that doesn't care about yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Loki would still be the same way. He was the first one to be like, "I'm not staying at this party." Mm -hmm. He's like, "That sounds like your mother to you. Yeah. Like that's not <laughs> my mama." Yeah. So I think I think he he has the opportunity right. to. He chooses not to. He's living just a relaxed yeah. lifestyle as much as uh, the prince yeah. Uh, yeah. Thor is. And I think to piggyback on Jess's idea of you know him not needing to have that uh, uh, special attention from his dad. Mm. He doesn't need to have something that makes him so unique like the magic mm, that he that has that true. connection with Frigga to where, 
you know, not learning magic. He's just happy in the way he is naturally. Because uh, to be quite honest, when he says that whole thing, like, you know, purpose or he says something to the effect that kind of mimics his, you know, glorious purpose mm-hmm. statement in towards mm-hmm. the tail end of this uh, episode. And it's like, OK, he doesn't he doesn't care about glorious purpose. He just wants to be. He just mm-hmm. is happy. Which, which is a unique side of Loki that we haven't seen in the MCU. So. It's so much better. It's so, it's so, like, it's so sweet and lovely. <laughs> this is your problem. It's yeah. like, I hate Party Thor, but I like Party Loki. I know, it's yeah. like, I so know. sad Part- that this is the only universe where he just, like, is so happy yeah. and content. Right? It's It was so nice to see the brothers bond and just be like, we love each other. Uh, yeah. We lo- like, I love you, Loki. I'm like, this is what I wanted. This I is what we all wanted to see. Oh, you they mean, needed to not be brothers to get that oh, world. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> even in the end, even when like Thor's pleading with them to say, he's like, oh, it's not my mom. See you, Thor. Yeah. And it was like, oh, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, peace, check a... you out the next time. And it's like the equivalent to how we see Ro- Loki in our universe, how he's just like, mm. but it's a bigger disaster. Like when he attacked yeah. New York, it's just like, yeah, well, f- you. It's like he has the same, <laughs> he has the same like mindset. It's just mm-hmm. a, a, such a lower form of just like yeah. helping you clean up this mess. Yeah. <laughs> Like, hi, <laughs> deuces, like, I'm leaving. Yeah. He said, like, let's bounce, Frost Boys. <laughs> <laughs> now, a really quick well, question, yeah. because I, I know yeah. we didn't, there wasn't a lot that gave, you know, credence to it, but there was in the Loki series. Do we mm. feel like this Loki is fluid? Ooh, uh, dude, oh, dude, yeah. for oh, yeah. sure. Just, oh, yeah. just, Rage you know, Loki sure. is oh, absolutely yeah. everything. Par- Party Loki Party doesn't Loki. like relationships. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, like titles. Yeah. You he doesn't like titles and he down. does not want it. Well, oh. these were all excellent responses, but I'm going to give 2,000 points to Eddie for his response, 3,000 points to Marina for her response, but 4,000 points to Jess for her addition to Marina's response. So that brings us to a number that I can't calculate with my small brain. But before we continue on to our rogue question, let's thank Honey for sponsoring this video. We all shop online and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online from gaming to popular fashion brands and food delivery. And when you check out from one of your favorite sites, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. At New Rockstar's producer Brandon has used Honey to save $18 $18 on a birthday gift for his nephew. And producer Zach saved $11 on a board game. What nice men. And Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on some free savings. And it's literally free and installs within seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting new rock stars because this type of stuff really does help us out. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash rogue theory. That is joinhoney.com slash rogue theory. All right. Gang, you guys ready for this rogue question? Well, for this rogue question, we've got a title for the next installment of the Fantastic Beasts franchise in the Wizarding World Cinematic Universe. It's Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. So pitch me your roguest theories on what Dumbledore's secrets might actually be. I I feel like the secret probably, I mean, in all good fun, yeah, I mean, there's really some semblance of, of... Information. I believe someone had said at one point in time that Dumbledore is actually, you know, bi. But also, in seriousness, like, the secrets probably have to do with, more than likely, the the finding of the Elder Wand and recognizing, you know, the the different uh, Deathly Hollows and and having them on hand in order for him to defeat Grindelwald when they do that final battle. I know Mm -hmm. there's still, like, what, five movies in this series Mm -hmm. that they're talking about? So this is what, movie three? Yeah, this is the third. This is the third. I watched the second one first, mm. and I was like, why are they? This is horrible writing. They already established who these friendships are. <laughs> like, and I am so confused. And then someone was like, Jessica, that's the second one. So I've never ah! seen the first one. <laughs> so I, saw, I saw the second one. The title, I wish they would just call them one or two. One or two. You don't need to come up with a crazy ass title. And yeah, I assume yeah, yeah. it's the first one. Yeah. And I do and I know. Just say Dude, F9. Yeah. Oh my God, thank you. And so I'm so confused in the order. And then I watched the second one and I was so confused. And when Johnny Depp showed up, cause I was like, he just showed up in the last 10 minutes. Spoiler. Either way. So funny. All right, so I'm going to take this, the not real route. Also, sorry, to, not sorry. JK Rowling can, 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. the plot of this is Dumbledore's secret is that he's actually Hermione's father. Ooh. And I think Ooh. because a genius <laughs> makes a genius and she's still um she's still mud bloodish. So I'm allowed to say it because me too. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm allowed to say it because yeah. me too. And so I think he's the wizard and mm -hmm. her mom is just a normal lawyer. <laughs> no, what if what if Dumbledore is Yen Sid from the whole Fantasia through two uh, Fantasia three thousand, four thousand, <gasps> two thousand, uh mm -hmm. where Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse is like master. Yeah. That would be First off, MT, you don't get points for your theory. <laughs> I know. I'm giving myself 10,000 points yeah, for yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I win. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I think I'm going to give the rogue points, 3,000 rogue points to Jess for that Hermione's dad Yay. thing because I think that's just super rogue. I would love to see uh, like just secretly Dumbledore being her father. Yeah. Just like, yeah, that's why we tolerate you. That's why everyone just tolerates your bullshit. Also, all the Dumbledore time. immediately <laughs> ran away. People. Dumbledore immediately dipped out. He went, oh shit, I'm a wizard, but I'll send her this invitation that's to my school. <laughs> that's why he. Uh, that's why he gave her the time turner. Like this is all I can do for you. I don't have child yeah. support. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Take this damn. Take this damn time clock and don't go farther back to see me. Hook up with your mom. Tell your mom stop sending me letters. Take this time turner. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can you stop guys, me from I can make this mother. joke because I have a single mom. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay, I think this makes Jess our winner for today's Yay! World Theory episode. Top Congratulations to Jess. You are the queen of today. I want to thank all of you beautiful people for joining me on this episode. You can follow all these beautiful people on their various Twitters. Jess at Lulu Clemens. Marina at Marina Masters, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And Eddie at Film Philosophy 101. Please follow all their stuff because they're all doing amazing things and we love supporting our beautiful friends of new rock stars. But more importantly, you, no, not more importantly, that's not that nice. Um, <laughs> more importantly than my friends, <laughs> them. Yeah. Uh, they my job. Yeah. <laughs> and of course you can support our channel by checking out all of our merch inspired by Shang-Chi and all of our cool nerd stuff at New Rockstars Merch. Com. Thank you all so, so much for watching, and we will see you guys later. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.